Have you been looking for those legendary weapons from Zeldas of old in Tears of the Kingdom? Well, look no further, because I'm about to tell you where 14 legendary weapons, bows, and shields are in the great Hyrule. Let's go! What's going on, everybody? It's DubCP back with another Zelda Tears of the Kingdom video, and this time I'm talking about those beautiful legendary shields, bows, and weapons you can find throughout all of Hyrule. Little bit of a lengthy video, and there's timestamps so you can skip along to find whatever item you need to have in your repertoire of legendary items. I'm gonna start with the easiest to get items first as they have no ties to any quest line, side quests or adventures. So spoiler alerts, I will be covering some quests as you have to complete some in order to get some of these legendary items. Let's get started with all the items you can access at any point in the game. The legendary dusk bow can be found at the highest point of Hyrule Castle. There are a few ways you can get to this point. You can make a Zonai device that can fly high enough to get there, either from the ground or from the Serutabamak shrine, if you've unlocked it, or you can fly from the Simosuwak shrine in the sky. Just make sure you have some stamina and tooling to get there, or a flying machine. Either way, all you need to do is make your way to the top of the castle, and resting in a blown out portion of the peak is the legendary Dusk Bow with a base power of 30. Next is the Hylian Shield, which is the best shield in the game and it ain't even close. And luckily for you, it's literally below you in the castle moat if you're still at the legendary Dusk Bow site. All you need to do is glide down ever so slightly to the northwest and enter a waterway that will lead you to the Hylian Shield Crest on a wall. Climb that wall and at the top, light the fire in the middle and a chest will pop out of the ground that will have the 800 use Hylian Shield with a base power of 90. For the next three, you need to head into the depths. The Sea Breeze Boomerang, Shield, and Sword of the Hero are all in the darkness. That is, unless you've lit it up already. The Boomerang is in the northwest portion of the map at the Hebra Canyon Mine. If you have the Muhuazua, <laughs> light route is just southeast of that if you don't have that light route you can get there by entering the drennan highlands chasm and heading west once you get there there will be a chest in the center of the mine holding the sea breeze boomerang with a base stat of 16. for the sea breeze shield you need to be on the right side of the map near the tabahal grove if you have the sec i am light route unlocked it's directly to the right if you don't have that light route, then you can enter from the Lanaru Wetlands Chasm. Either way, you need to travel to the Tobble Hall Grove, spot right here on the map, where once you defeat a Gloom Tree, the chest will yield the Sea Breeze Shield with a base stat of 65. And now for the last easy legendary item to get in the depths, the Sword of the Hero. This legendary sword is located right here on the map. If you have the Muzazu light route, it will be to the southeast. If you don't have the light route, you can enter through the Yiga clan hideout chasm and make your way northeast towards the daylight grove. Either way, once you arrive at this spot on the map, you will again need to fight off a tree to get the chest holding the hero sword with the base stat of 17. Now, let's talk about the items that require some work. Just a little bit, just a little bit of work. Starting with the Bigaron sword from Ocarina of Time. You will have to fight an easy mini boss located at the bottom of Skull Lake Chasm. You can easily get there from the nearby Kamatukusk Shrine if you've already unlocked it. And if you don't, just make your way to the left eye of Skull Lake at the top right of the map. Once at the bottom, you will take on some bone enemies along with the Stalnox, the big bone enemy with the big old eye. Just shoot it in the eye and destroy the eyeball when it pops out. And once it's defeated, a chest with the base stat 36 Bigaron sword will appear. On to the White Sword of the Sky. This sword requires dragon claws from the Fire, Frost, and Lightning Dragons. So make sure you have those handy. And if you don't, here's where the dragons can be located on the map. Keep in mind, they also travel in the depths. So if you don't see them above ground, look below. And then shoot the dragons in the claws. And the claws are gonna pop off and you're gonna have some claws. Once you got them claws, you need to start by going to the Forgotten Temple 
and examining the fallen statue. The Forgotten Temple is located right here on the map. Once you do that, head on over to the Spring of Wisdom, which is here on the map. You will need to give the Frost Dragon's Claw, Nadra, to the statue at the Spring of Wisdom. Talk to the statue and she'll ask for the claw. Drop it in the water in front of her and she'll ask you to help two more statues. The Fire Dragon's Claw, Dinral, will be presented at the Spring of Power right here on the map. And the Lightning Dragon, Farosh, will need to be presented here on the map at the Spring of Courage. Again, the process is talk to the statues and then drop the claw in front of them. Once all the claws have been presented, you need to make your way to the Mother Goddess statue again in the Forgotten Temple, and she will award you with the White Sword of the Sky with the base stat of 24. Next up, we have the Fierce Deity Sword that will require you to visit three different locations in order to obtain the Fierce Deity armor set. When you acquire all three pieces and put it on, it will unlock a wall that will contain the Fierce Deity Sword. If you want to see a full video on how to get that set, I have a video on the channel that shows exactly what needs to be done. For time purposes, I'll just show you where each piece is on the map. The mask is located inside the right eye of Skull Lake. The armor is located in the Akala Citadel Ruins Summit Cave. You have to go through a small hole in the ruins to get to the cave. And the Fierce Deity Boots are located inside the Ancient Tree Stump Cave. Again, I have a complete video on this armor set. Link is in the description. Once you have the Fierce Deity armor set, put it on and enter the Safala Lake Cave and a stone wall will automatically open and a chest will be there with a fierce deity sword with a base stat of 38. The next four weapons come after completing the four sages main quest, meaning you have to have obtained all four sages in order to get each of these weapons. Let's start with the great eagle bow. After completing the wind sage at the top of Rito Village, Tullin's father will tell you he needs a swallow bow three diamonds, and five bundles of wood to make the bow. Simply hand him the materials and voila, he hands you the three shot base stat 28 Great Eagle Bow. If you don't have the Swallow Bow, it can be found here on the map. Just burn the iceberg on the right and inside the chest will be the bow. As for the diamond, and if you haven't duped them yet from the version 1.1.2 dupe glitch or the version 1.1.1 dupe glitch, you can always buy some from the vendor in Goron City and wood can be chopped down anywhere. Now for the boulder breaker. After you have completed the fire sage in Goron City, a smither will require a cobble crusher, three diamonds, and five pieces of flint to make the boulder breaker with a base stat of 38. Give him the materials and let him go to work. If you don't have the cobble crusher, there's a chest right here on the map that will have one inside. As for the diamonds, the same as for the eagle bow. You can buy or find them. The flint is all over Goron City. Then there comes the light scale trident. Finish the water sage and in Zora's domain, there will be a Zora right behind the fish merchant that will need a Zora spear, three diamonds and five pieces of flint to make the light scale trident with a base stat of 22. If you don't have the Zora spear, there is a Bokoblin holding one right here on the map. Slap them around and you'll have your spear. The diamonds and flint are the same as before. And if we travel to Gerudo Town, once the Lightning Sage has been unlocked, there will be a vendor that needs saving from a Molduga located here on the map. Go ahead and save her, then head back to town where she will be able to craft the Daybreaker Shield and the Scimitar of the Seven, which in my opinion is the most powerful weapon in the game when fused with the Silver Lionel Horn. She will need a Gerudo Scimitar and a Gerudo Shield four diamonds and 10 flint. Give her the materials and she will gift you the sword and the shield. Scimitar will double any fused item's attack power. So if you have a silver lino horn with a fused power of 55, it will be 110 when you attach it, given an attack stat of 138, a beast. If you don't have either the shield or the scimitar, you can save farm any Molduga to drop both items. And you know the vibes for the diamonds and the flint. Now. For the final legendary weapon in Tears of the Kingdom, the Dusk 
Claymore. You will need all sages unlocked in order to get this sword. Head on over to the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower and interact with the man at the campfire in front to activate the Investigate Typhlo Ruins quest. Then read the four stone tablets next to him, which will activate four different side adventures. You will need to go to each spot located here on the map and perform a sage power. For the water, you will need to be here on the map surrounded by these statues. And once you perform the sage power, a chest will pop up. Get the chest. For the fire, you need to be here on the map. And you need to shoot a fireball down a corridor of statues just like this, and another chest will pop up. For the lightning, you need to be here on the map. And you need to shoot the lightning arrow onto the platform and another chest will pop up. And for the wind, you need to be here on the map and you will blow wind over the platform to get the chest to pop up. Once you collected all the chests, you will then get a small cutscene where the last chest is. Go inside and at the bottom of the stairs will be a chest containing the base stat 32 dust claymore. Also, be sure to talk to the man and complete the quest as you will be greatly rewarded. That's it. That's all the rare legendary items in Tears of the Kingdom. I hope this video helps and if it did, consider slapping that like button for me. Comment down below what you think and subscribe for more Zelda videos. As always, you already know what it is. You already know what it was. It's your boy Dubs. See, Pete, here to do one thing and one thing only. And that's. Deuces.